Today I noticed a lot of butterflies had come down. Now this may well be because there are salts and minerals here in the soil, but I'm sure that's probably been enhanced as well by the urine of the larger mammals that come here. That will also attract the butterflies. Wonderful to see them feeding and also to be able to get so close to them. Uh, when the butterflies are, are found a really good food source, they're often so preoccupied with it that I'm able to sneak across the ground up to them. Able to see here, as a result, the liquid that is passing through these animals and then coming out the back end at a, an astonishing rate, really. Now, I know some species of butterfly will actually eject a liquid onto the ground to make it wetter to assist in in feeding but i don't think that's what's happening here i think the the ground is wet enough a green dragon tail with these outrageous appendages on the wing not looking like a butterfly at all looking more like some kind of damselfly or dragonfly And then perhaps one of the most conspicuous of our butterflies, a common bird wing, this large black and yellow butterfly, almost too gorgeous for words, really, quite incredible. Some small yellow butterflies, these are three spot grass yellows, almost always found in a group of several individuals, as is the case here. And later on, one of the tigers, I think this is a dark blue tiger, they're quite difficult to tell apart quite often, and uh, I only saw one of these feeding on the ground, lovely little sort of translucent windows in the wings of these uh, tiger butterflies. Another Paris peacock, this time with a common jay. And once again with these Paris peacocks so intent on feeding, I was able to get in very close to them indeed. As we move on through winter and the grass begins drying out and the, and the landscape starts losing some of its summer vibrancy, we see the floodwaters pushing into Miremi and all the jackalberry trees start coming into fruit. These trees ironically come into, come into fruit in midwinter, which seems a bit strange, but it provides a a most welcome snack to, to many animals that feed on the fruit. We find a herd of impala and a troop of vervid monkeys. The monkeys scamper up into the into the tops of the trees and they feed very actively up there. In doing so, they they knock a lot of the fruit to the ground, and this is what the impala are after. A lot of the troops stay on the ground and, and feed on the fruit that falls. Monkeys are always so amusing to watch. They have such distinct human-like characteristics that they're always engaging and entertaining to sit and watch for a while. So 
several of the young monkeys begin grooming themselves. It's strictly related to dominance. A less dominant monkey would always groom a, groom a more dominant. As with all animals, young monkeys are incredibly playful and a whole bunch of the youngsters move off into a, a dry feverberry tree and they play for a long time, scampering up and down the branches. They're still not quite as agile as the adults, but this play with each other strengthens their muscles and, and teaches them the agility that they need. The troop all eventually move off as well and carry on feeding for the day. The first crocodile that we came across was quite small, uh, two to three meters, and he had his head buried. It's amazing with these crocodiles, uh, they'll go under and go straight into an area where there's a lot of vegetation and they'll bury their heads and their eyes in a very dark place. And in doing this, a little bit of sediment that they have stirred up would, would actually rest on top of their scoots and and along their tails. This guy must have been here for at least the past half an hour. It's always with the slightly smaller ones, they have this incredibly beautiful, rich, yellow color to them. They're much lighter and prettier than the bigger ones. Just from behind me came the next croc we saw and he was just in excess of three meters. He had found a place just to rest on the bottom. We managed to steady ourselves in the currents and get quite a close look at this croc. This croc's body looked small for its head and its skin was actually wrinkled almost like he had lost a lot of condition. Eventually he turned and pushed up the bank away from us. This is when we drifted onto probably one of the biggest crocodiles I have, I have seen underwater. This croc was definitely in excess of, of four meters. He really was a beautiful specimen. A four meter crocodile is, a, is an incredibly big animal and it does make you think that you drifting down the main channel of the Okavango next to this beast. This croc was very fat and in good condition, completely, completely different to the crocodile that we had just seen. He began to move quite slowly and headed upstream as they usually do. He was almost walking slowly on the bottom. The strong current doesn't seem to, to bother these animals at all. We knew that this croc was heading towards some cave or some dark area that he could get some cover. So we started to move north towards a, a cave that we knew. As we entered, he was moving through this labyrinth of caves.
This croc wasn't shy of us at all and just inside the cave he began to stop and rest despite us being so close to him. The teeth on this crocodile seem to be curved slightly backwards. They seem to be designed for holding or hanging. It's not often you see that in crocodiles. Normally they have relatively straight teeth. The majority of crocodiles in the Okavango are are heavily reliant on fish over and above any other prey. As I turned to go back and took the light off this crocodile, it was just quite incredible to see how camouflaged this, this animal is in this environment. They really are masters of the underworld. 